what do we need to consider in terms of designing this thing? What makes a great hydrofoil? Well, uh, some things are kind of obvious and other things uh, less so. Uh, when I started out, I wanted to use flat wings because obviously that would be the most efficient because all the force vectors are perfectly going up and you're not throwing any lift away. And what I found was that the stability always seemed very poor, especially when you're using a high lift airfoil. Using flat wings, you can get somewhat of a locked feel, but you have to use a very low lift airfoil, an airfoil that's almost symmetrical, in order to get a fairly good lock. It appears, for whatever reason, that you need some amount of wing and stabilizer curvature to get good stability in a hydrofoil. Some, the more the better, actually. And I think the SPOTS 2 was really a seminal design in showing that having curvature in the wing created tremendous stability in that foil, particularly downwind, even though that hydrofoil itself probably wasn't as stiff as it needed to be and was perhaps a little bit dry here. So I think one key to having a good hydrofoil is having some amount of curvature in the wing. I think another aspect that's very, very important for having a successful hydrofoil at the speeds that you guys are going down is an extremely high amount of stiffness. If there's any flexibility between the wing and the strut through this section of the fuselage, it's, it's very poor for performance. Any flexibility in the stabilizer, any flexibility within the strut itself, and I think we all need to be also concerned about the stiffness within the board itself around the tuttle box because the loads are quite high, and any flexibility in the tuttle box actually causes the foil to feel less stable than it should. In certain circumstances, we're kind of stuck. Ideally, for a low drag, we'd like to make the strut as thin as possible, but the stiffness of the strut scales as the cube of the thickness. So, as we make this thinner and thinner, we just hit a point where the stiffness of the strut falls away very, very quickly. And this really explains why almost every strut out there right now is at 13 millimeters. If you go much below 13 millimeters, you're just not going to be able to uh, maintain the stiffness in the strut that you need. So, stiffness is absolutely key and it needs to be throughout the whole system from the board all the way down into the fuselage, the stabilizer, everything else. At this point, to make a competitive race foil, you really need to be using high modulus carbon uh, in order to maintain that stiffness while having the thinnest possible profile. The third absolutely necessary ingredient for a successful racing hydrofoil is surface finish. If you have pinholes, you have waviness, you have orange peel from a sprayed on finish, you have a decal, forget about it. Your surface finish has to be dead nuts perfect and the reason for that is uh, the transition between laminar to turbulent flow. Basically there are two types of liquid flows adjacent to a solid surface moving through the water. The first type of flow is called laminar flow and in laminar flow each layer of liquid next to that surface slides with respect to each other sort of like the sheets of paper in a stack of paper if you shear it. In turbulent flow what happens is that those layers actually start to mix. Okay, so that they don't slide over each other, they tumble. And that's called turbulent flow. And when you start at the leading edge of something passing through the water, initially you have laminar flow, and then at some point along that surface, it transitions to a turbulent flow. The resistance of a turbulent boundary layer flow is at least five times greater than laminar flow. Okay, so Possibly over the first inch and a half, two inches of your strut, you have laminar flow and it creates, say, you know, some amount of resistance per square unit of area. Once it transitions to turbulent flow, 
that resistance is five times higher. That's absolutely huge. So what you want to do is you want to delay the transition between laminar flow to turbulent flow as long as you can. And what triggers that transition is tiny little imperfections in the surface, which could be anything that protrudes up, but it can also be pinholes, it could be oil, finger oil, suntan lotion, anything like that can trigger that transition. And what we're finding is, again, a lot of this uh, study has been done for aircraft and it's done in air, and it's a little bit different in water, although we claim that we can use that data uh, in water. And I think what the America's Cup guys have found is that we don't really have as much laminar flow as we think we should have. And I think the reason is that there's particulates in the water itself, that when that water goes by, that algae or silt or anything that's in the water actually trips the transition to turbulent flow before it would if the water were absolutely uh, particulate free, which in our case it never is. What that means for you guys, as a practical matter, is that at least the first half from the trailing edge back of the wing, the strut, the stabilizer, needs to be smoothed to at least a thousand grit. You can't have any pinholes, and I will tell you right now, just about any hydrofoil that you buy will not be race ready the way you get it. You gotta spray paint it, you gotta sand it, it's gotta be perfectly smooth. If you have a bad paint job, you have a bad surface finish, your foil's gonna whistle, it's gonna vibrate, it's gonna have high drag, it's gonna be hopeless. So you're gonna need to do the work to make the surface finish as perfect as possible. I have several videos on YouTube on how to fill pinholes, on how to smooth your foil, but you can check that out and, uh, and avail yourself to that. So I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to, to talk about. Uh, I'd be happy to take questions on anything you guys want to ask. But once again, I think a certain amount of wing curvature, very high stiffness, and very high quality surface finish are all absolutely critical for having a successful high performance hydrofoil.